didn't know why Armageddon had come. They'd heard radio chatter about an attack on some space-based missile platform. But who had attacked it? Or why? No one knew. There's a reason people talk about Fallout, Planescape Torment, Baldur's Gate, and the original Wasteland in reverent tones. While built on the works of Tolkien, Mad Max, and Dungeons and & Dragons, they took these templates and forged something new. They offer worlds that players can get lost in, where you live and die by your own decisions. They make failure an intrinsic part of the journey. Within the last few years, there seems to be a yearning for that type of game again, if numerous Kickstarter success stories are any indication. Wasteland 2 proves that the hopeful, dedicated groups giving money to these projects were right in doing so. The game not only honors its 26-year-old predecessor, it also manages to instill nearly everything sacred about classic computer role-playing games without feeling outdated. In many ways, it's a vibrant revitalization. A huge contributor to Wasteland 2's success is that it cares about the little things. Characters and environments have a level of detail that gives the game a strong sense of place. In many RPGs, shopkeepers greet you with little more than a simple hello, but here, many of them have stories and defining features. While walking toward a militia-run prison, we encountered a traveling merchant whose wagon was stuck in a ditch. The game described him as having a face like the back end of a porcupine with only three teeth in his mouth, all the color of snot. Despite his rather unfortunate appearance, he was a kind soul whose only friend was a goat. Apparently the goat had witnessed so many murders and other atrocities that it could mimic the screams. Ah! Even more impressive is how you can interact with these memorable characters. By using the brute force skill, you can push the wagon out of the ditch, and only then, he can sell you his wares. Our party lacked such a skill, especially disappointing because we happened to be low on ammo. We wondered if the crying goat would speak to us if we had the animal whisperer skill. How you build your party matters, and it's almost impossible to be good at everything. In so many games, character progression basically amounts to different ways of arriving at the same place. In Wasteland 2, every time you have to put a skill point into something, it's excruciating because they're also valuable. Skills determine what you can and cannot do, which largely dictates what you see. Entire story threads can be missed without the right skill, making the adventures feel personal and therefore easy to get invested in. We may not have had the brute force skill when we first encountered the ugly merchant and his goat, but we absolutely came back to help him once we did. Of course, other games bend things based on player choice, but few offer such fantastic settings and characters as Wasteland 2. The game is so creatively charged that it's hard to predict what you're going to run into next. The Ag Center is filled with mutated plants, so when you run through its fields, you'll see pumpkins the size of cars and peppers that could crush a human being. The plants emit spores that have turned the helpless residents of the center into oozing bulbous monsters that explode upon death. In the Canyon of Titan, monks that worship a nuclear missile maintain order by blowing up anyone who doesn't pay them tribute. It's so evident that the people who constructed Wasteland 2 care about the places and people that inhabit it because so much of the game is filled with things worth remembering. All of it is infused with sardonic humor that hits at the right moments, preventing the game from ever being self-absorbed. After seeing corpses hung from a roadside sign, for instance, the game says, this place does not inspire poetry. Please, Elroy. Oh, Elroy. Appropriately, the combat strongly reinforces the world Wasteland 2 is trying to present. Your weapon may jam, you might accidentally hit and kill a comrade, suffer a concussion after being smacked with a nail-filled 2x4, or start bleeding after being shot with a sniper rifle. Each move and action takes points that draw from a very limited pool, so there's only so much you can do in a turn. With lots of things to consider, even the simplest fights can go awry if you don't account for one minor thing. Although that may sound more frustrating than fun, it makes your group truly feel like survivors living in a place where things can very easily and often do go bad. It's also vindicating when an enemy's weapon jams, reminding you that no matter how brutal things get, at least the game plays fair. For those that find it a bit too rough, you can change the difficulty at any time. Even on the easiest setting, however, Wasteland 2 still requires your full attention. Unfortunately, combat also has its share of issues. The most grating one is that there's no good way to scout ahead. Since the game lacks any sort of stealth, it's far too easy to stumble into and engage enemy groups unprepared. The best way to proceed is to inch the party forward, making exploration drag. 
The pacing problem also extends beyond fights. There are times when things feel like they should be moving along far more quickly, which is especially noticeable in some of the more mundane side missions. The worst offender was in the town of High Pool, where we agreed to fix an irrigation system. To do so, three of the four party members had to run through tunnels while the remaining person opened and closed airlock doors. Due to limited power, only a few doors could be opened at a time, forcing us to constantly switch between the main group and the person flipping switches. The only enemies to fight were oversized bugs that barely presented a challenge. There's a lot worth seeing in Wasteland 2, but there are also plenty of menial chores to be done. Yet these gripes feel minor in a game that offers so much. After all the time we've spent traveling the wastes, there's still plenty more we have yet to see. Wasteland 2 may not be the best looking game, nor does it play in any sort of revelatory fashion but it can still pull you in and refuse to let go. Echo One, your team's recent progress merits a number of field promotions. Congratulations, Echo One. You've done well.